Now I'm going to show you something even more amazing. How many lines can you see here? One. Actually, there are two, and they're stuck to each other at this point. Now, this line is free to go wherever he wants, and this line is the lazy guy line. He just wants to stay there. Now, when the active guy line starts moving, something's getting formed between these two lines. A pointy angle. We call it a cute angle. A cute angle. Yes, a cute angle. You can remember that it's a little angle, so it's a cute angle. A cute. Okay. Now this line moves all the way up till it stands up straight. That's special when it stands up straight. So we call the angle made a right angle. Right, because it's upright. And because it's special, we'll use a little square to show it. There, like this. So this little square between two lines means that this is a right angle. Okay, let's move on. If I move it a little bit more, all this way, it's called an obtuse angle. The angle will get more and more obtuse till the line is horizontal again. And then. The lines will be twice as long as when they started. If it's small, it's cute. Sorry, acute. And if it's not, it's obtuse. You got it. If it's not acute or right, it's obtuse. The line can rotate all the way around till it gets back to the place where it started. Now, let me show you something amazing. One full circle is made up of so many angles. An angle can be big, an angle can be small. No matter how big or small, though, it just depends on the space between the two lines. That's the secret to your answer. Since a circle is made up of so many angles, I'll measure it using what I use to measure angles, and that is degrees. Okay, so how many degrees are there in a circle? Now that's what I call a brilliant question. The answer is three hundred and sixty. It's not a number that I have given. Ancient mathematicians decided to break a circle down into three hundred and sixty equal parts, and each part they gave a name. They called it a degree. And don't think I'm throwing a number at you. I'm going to explain, at least try to explain, the best reason why it is three hundred and sixty and not. Ten, hundred, thousand, or any other number. So first, I'll ask you to take a minute and think about where you have heard the number three hundred and sixty before. Shall I give you a clue? It has something to do with birthdays. How often do you have your birthday? One every three hundred and sixty-five days. So the Earth makes one full circle around the Sun in three hundred and sixty-five days. That's why we have a New Year every three hundred and sixty-five days. Yes, the number of days in a year we know now is calculated as three hundred and sixty-five. Okay, let's ask a deeper question. Since the Earth completes one full circle every three hundred and sixty-five days, can every day count as a small addition? To completing the full circle, yes, it can. The sun would appear to change its position every single day by a small amount, and it would happen to move like that, bit by bit, bit by bit, through the sky, like in a journey. You move step by step, all together equal to the amount of distance the Earth has covered in one full circle. And just say you are this scientist living a few millennia ago. You didn't have modern fancy instruments to accurately record the positions of objects in the sky. You just might conclude then, with a small error, that the sun moves, say, about one out of three hundred and sixty of the way along the circle every day, which is exactly what ancient astronomers did. And then they made this leap of thought. And decided to divide the circle on the sky 
and all circles they saw around them into 360 equal paths so that the sun would move through one path every day each part was dubbed one degree giving us the idea that the circle contains 360 degrees